Hi, I'm Sam Tucker, and I've been an iPhone user ever since I was a younger, thinner, one-chinned boy, with some blackberries in between. But now, for the next 30 days, I'll be trading in my iPhone for a Google Pixel 6a. But is Android 6a? Well, follow me on my adventure, and let's find out. So first off, why the switch? Well, the reason that I wanted to switch from iPhone can basically be summed up in a single word. Courage. No, respect. Or more, the lack thereof that has been coming from pretty much every tech company, but Apple specifically, where, you know, they just keep taking features away and then increasing the price. And they go on about wanting to save the environment, but then they just solder everything to it. So no, you know what? I'm getting out of any tech ecosystem, specifically Apple. And um, one of the main reasons actually I did do the switch is because my iPhone 12 ran out of storage and it's really expensive to get another one. So what's my Android weapon of choice? Well, I chose to go with ooh, the Pixel 6a because, well, it was kind of cheap secondhand. <laughs> Plus, because I got it secondhand, I'm not funding Google directly. <laughs> and it means it was a little bit cheaper. Because this is, after all, a bit of an experiment, so I didn't want to invest straight in. And talking about awesome deals, big shout out to this video sponsor, Ugreen. For me, the Ugreen Nexode Pro 100 watt charger is the perfect travel companion. It slides easily into my hand, into my bag, and into my back pocket. In fact, it's smaller than this 60 watt charger from Apple, despite being almost twice as powerful and can charge so much more. If you plug in just one USB-C device in the top here, then it can deliver a full 100 watts to your computer, which means in 60 minutes, it can charge the new 14 inch MacBook Pro from zero to 86%. Alternatively, it can charge this tiny 12 inch MacBook before I even plug it in. Well, all right, that last part wasn't technically correct, but it was technically fun to say. Of course, you can spread that 100 watt amongst three separate devices. And it also supports Samsung's 45 watt super fast charging 2.0. And of course, it comes with the smart thermal guard built in, who makes sure that the only thing that gets too hot are his smoky blue eyes. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to get 15% off your Ugreen Nexode Pro 100 watt charger until the end of the year and have a 100 watt travel companion of your own. Click the link. The other reason I went with a uh, Google Pixel phone is these are the only ones that you can install a custom version of Android on them called Graphene OS, which is basically the latest version of Android, but with all of the Google ickiness spyware taken out because I didn't just want to go from Apple's spyware to Google's. And so Graphene OS was the way to go. Setting up Android. Ish. So after I installed Graphene OS through a web browser of all things, I was met with a very minimal Android 14 setup with very few apps pre-installed. And so I went to work setting the Kitai as my wallpaper and then doing things that you can't do on an iPhone like installing alternate app stores like the F-Droid store for all of my favorite open source apps like Joplin for notes, Climber for weather, and AntennaPod for podcasts. Now, there were some closed source apps that I did want to install onto this device, like uh, for banking and YouTube studio, and yes, even WhatsApp. Look, I'm not proud about that. I want to throw up too, but apparently it's much more popular in Europe than it is in Australia, and some of my business contact people use it, so it's there. And for those, I decided to install the actual Google Play Store, just to make sure that I installed the official version of those apps so that I wouldn't have my money or YouTube channel stolen. But the great thing about Graphene OS is that you can actually install the Google Play Store and Google Play services in sandboxed mode, which means that Google can't spread their tentacles out all over my phone. Now, 
they're just contained in their own little box and I can still get my apps and notifications just fine. Banking, messages, it, it all works. What I loved about Android. Okay, so basically with Android, the thing I pretty much most like is what a lot of people would say. The more control and customization you have, like especially in Graphene OS, you can actually limit the network access that uh, all the apps you install have which I absolutely love because it means that I could have the official Google Pixel camera app and by limiting its network access, I knew that it wasn't sending those awesome photos to Google. Another great thing I love about Android is that there are a lot more open source options for apps. And I like open source because you know that it's not, it's not fingering anything in, in your private life that it shouldn't because all of the source code and that for the app is visible for people to check out. More open source might be coming to the iPhone soon once they open it up to more app stores. I think that might be coming to Europe. But for now, Android is the place to be for that. I loved how you could switch from gesture mode to the three button mode. Look, I'm old school. I like a home button, a uh, square button's fine. But uh, the back button I really like because it's so much easier to hit the back button right there rather than reach into the top or swiping in from the left or some crazy stuff like that. So. I love that that's an option. I liked how Android gave you more control over your files with the proper file system, which was very handy when I was transferring over all of my MP3s. Again, old school way, because no one can delete your MP3s from Sam Music. I own Sam Music. And those songs actually bought most of them legitimately. Most, if not all. Who's, who's listening? CIA, shut up. And here's something you can't do on an iPhone multiple users. So right now I've set up a second user just for Google Maps and that way I can get navigation and use the good Google Map app without uh, Google tracking my main account with all my main goodies on there. They just have the blank user with nothing on that account which makes it again a little more secure and a big finger to Google. Which one? Not this one. What I miss about iPhone. So really, the only thing that I miss about the iPhone is that how pretty much everything was better. You know, it feels better, looks better, all the apps just feel a little bit more polished and you get less weird, unnecessary notifications. Like I've gotten weirder ones, but just one that keeps popping up is that, oh, your phone's up to date. By the way, it's up to date. Did I tell you that it's up to date? Look, it's fine. I don't care if it's up to date, it's good. Don't, stop telling me about it. But you know, these are all minor things that I can live with because what matters more to me is the control, the dignity, the respect, the sovereignty over myself and my own devices. The only problem though, is that uh, when you switch to Android, every iPhone user in your life will collectively go, Ugh, really? And so I present Android alternatives for iPhone people. So first of all, I have a shared Apple reminders list uh, with my wife for shopping. And for me to access that, all I do is I sign in through the web browser and then just added a shortcut to the home screen. Now it's not as fast and feature rich as the natural app of that would do, but it does the job. Instead of AirDrop, I highly recommend an open source application called LocalSend. You can share photos between iPhone and Android wirelessly. It's encrypted. And really the only difference with AirDrop is that uh, it uses your local Wi-Fi network instead of Bluetooth. So you do have to be on the same Wi-Fi router for it to work. And for video calls and chat, I use Signal. It's open source, it's encrypted. Now, the video calls that you do through it aren't quite as good quality as FaceTime, iPhone to iPhone. But again, it gets the job done. If you wanna be locked into Apple, you get the nice things. If you don't, you still get the things, but just not quite as nice. And that's the price you pay. The price you pay at Apple is the actual price. So what does my future hold? Well, the verdict is, is that I've switched to Android. Yes, or more specifically, Graphene. OS, because I really like it. I, I really like the options and the way I've got it all set up. And so there you go. This is my new phone. What phone do you use? Let me know in the comments below and would you ever consider changing? And again, big thanks to you, Green. Click the link in the description to check out their Nexode Pro. That's me, everyone. I'm an Android boy now. And until next time, stay funky, everyone. Same time, signing off. Subscribe today. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> a Merry Christmas, everyone. And thanks for an awesome 2023. Even my phone notifications are.
celebrating right now. Let's look forward to an awesome 2024, and I'll see you there. But for now, it's holidays. Let's go on holiday, bud. Let's go. Woohoo! All right, bye, everyone.